Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Podcast Pasta. That's a podcast that's like pasta, not the podcast that's about pasta. As always, I'm your host, Mike. And um, today's episode might not play well, especially if it reaches outside of my typical audience. So we'll see how that goes when we get there. But today, I kind of want to give my thoughts on stand-up comedy. And in particular, I guess my general disinterest in it. Now, before before I get started with anything, I don't. I just have to say that um, this isn't to say that I dislike stand up comedy. I think it's fine as a form of you know comedic expression. Uh, I've even seen like a number of like stand up comedy specials in my time. The most notable ones I could think of are like way back in the day, uh, like very famous. I think it was like yeah, it was like Robin Williams HBO special. You know the really big one that everyone's. Uh, I like the work of like Mitch Hedberg, uh, Rodney Dangerfield. Uh, I think the last stand-up special that I saw was um, Eric Andre had had one for Netflix. And I was curious to see if you know Eric Andre's Gonzo type like shock humor would translate well into uh, a stand-up format. And spoiler alert, I didn't really think so. I mean, it, it wasn't the worst. I, I just thought it was like okay. But what I mean when I say disinterest is that, you know, whenever I sit down at Netflix and I have like free time to watch something, I never have the instinct to like queue up a stand up comedy special. And I think that's like for a number of different reasons, some more personal to me, but I think some kind of relating to like the state of like modern stand up comedy in particular. Uh, so part of it for me. Is that, you know, as you, as like longtime listeners may or may not know, um, the P, like, my, my interest is in like narratives above anything else. I love like you know, in t- it, negotiating and interrogating different stories across like, television, video games, movies. And you don't really like stand up comedy specials aren't really known for like their strict narratives, right? It's more just like someone just, you know, telling a few jokes or whatever again nothing wrong with that just yeah you know, it's just not usually my cup of tea but i think um beyond that and in particular with like a lot of modern stand-up that i i find i think more kind of um i i mean it sounds like a harsh term but i guess like detestable uh and i, I find it more detestable than like i guess old and I'm not to say that, you know, we should return to tradition with stand-up comedy or whatever. But for the longest time, I couldn't figure out why I didn't like a lot of modern stand-up comedy. And I think, and it, it wasn't until, like, recently, YouTube started recommending me uh, Kill Tony uh, clips. And for, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it later, but... Um, as a part of that, I also got recommended a video talking about like uh, a lot of the state of like modern standup, and a part of it was like kind of negotiating uh, Joe Rogan's influence on the modern standup sphere. Um, and I, I guess I'll get to it in this episode because I don't think I'm ever going to do like a separate episode where I talk about it. But uh, I do not like Joe Rogan at all. Uh, and again, it's for like a mix of reasons. Some of them are more personal to me being in this, uh, podcasting sphere. You're often drawn, like people often draw comparisons between like my work and his. And, uh, I take that as kind of an insult because I don't find any inspiration in what Joe Rogan does. He doesn't like motivate anything of like how I structure my show. I see myself as very much. A different style than what Joe Rogan does, even though there are like some overlaps. Um, so it's it's always kind of annoying when you know you talk to people and you like tell them, "Oh, hey, I do like a podcast, you know, for fun," and they say, "Oh, you must really like Joe Rogan," and then you have to go into the whole thing, like, "No, no not really." Um, you know, not to mention also like his politics, which is going to be outside the scope of this video. I'm not really going to get into like a lot of his terrible political takes. But um, I think outside of like my own personal grudges with Joe Rogan, a lot of um, 
like in terms of his content, I just I gotta say it. I think he is overhyped, and you have to see where I'm coming from with it. Like Joe Rogan, I think is the top podcast, if not like second. I, I don't know if he's like ahead of Critical Role or behind Critical Role. But it's like I know those two are like the top spots. But I think keeping that in mind, I think he is just way overhyped. I think a lot of like his appeal, he's basically carried by his guest. You know, uh, I, I can't fathom anybody that listens to Joe Rogan for Joe Rogan. Like they're going to tune in and they're going to be like, oh boy, I can't wait to hear Joe Rogan talk. Like, no, it's usually like he brings on interesting guests and he does, but like, of course he can bring interesting guests on. He's like one of the top podcasts, right? Like, um, and I, I just don't know if that's like a good place to be as like a podcaster. If like, you know, there's no interest coming from you. It's only from your guests. Um, and like, I just, I just don't, I, I just don't think he's that charismatic either. Like, I think he's just been outclassed by like pretty much anybody else that does what he kind of does. And I, I don't want this to sound like I, I should preface. I don't want this to sound conceited to say that I could do better. Again, I don't really see myself like, as in the same style as Joe Rogan, but I wouldn't ever want to compete against him in terms of, you know, the casual interviews sphere or whatever. But like in terms of like other like um, even YouTubers approaching it, I just find uh, like them to be more engaging than like Joe Rogan. Um, and so. Yeah, I think a lot, of, he's just, he's just, I just don't see an interest in Joe. Like, to put in perspective, I don't think he could do what I'm doing now, right? Like, I don't think he could just have a solo episode where he just talks with himself, or maybe, I know he has, like, Jamie as, like, a, not a co-host, but he, like, helps with, like, the technical stuff of his uh, program. Like, I just don't think he could. Like, I think he has to have a guest. Not to mention, like, I, I think, like, over time, he's, uh, and this isn't a, a criticism that you know, I've exclusively levied. Other people have talked about, like, you know, with his Spotify deal. And just over the years, he's kind of gotten, like, more of an ego. The show, it just seems like it just puts a bad taste in my mouth, personally. Uh, not to mention, like, some more, you could argue, just, like, more nitpicky things. Like, the fact that his interviews are, like, three hours long crazy to me like i always think i'm pushing it with like hour-long interviews with guests but then i always remember joe rogan does like three hours and okay <laughs> at least like that's that's a feature length movie right and i don't care how good of an interview you are you are which again i don't think joe rogan viewer like people are gonna i i would lose interest at an hour and a half mark so i just think three hours is crazy like i get i'm thinking to myself like i could be watching a movie and I get it. You're supposed to be, you know, uh, listening to it like offhandedly. You're not just listening to Joe Rogan. Often people do a lot of working out or driving. And I get that, but it's just like, no, nah, I just, I, I just don't see it. I just don't see it. I mean, I get what I, I get. Why he's successful, right? Like he obviously hit upon like appealing to a demographic that wasn't really being served in the podcasting sphere like i get that i get why he has an audience i just don't just for me i don't see the appeal but going back to the main topic of this episode how does this relate to modern stand-up well the video i was watching earlier was talking about how um, a big part of Joe Rogan's show is stand-up uh, talent that he features on the program, or even like some stand-up comedian that got their start as guests on Joe Rogan, right? And keep in mind, like again, Joe Rogan, like top podcasts in America, if not the world, um, having that spot, he kind of become this de facto kingmaker for stand-up comedic talent and 
again with my disdain of Joe Rogan. Oh, I, the fact that I also probably don't like I don't like his sense his sense of comedy, what he finds funny, and, and see it effectively like picking the up and coming talent, both directly and indirectly, because I know not like all the big stand up stars are necessarily directly to Joe Rogan, but there's usually like an adjacency there, right? Where even people that have never been on Joe Rogan, but none see the appeal. The uh, like you know the popularity of Joe Rogan they try to um kind of you know they try to play to that crowd because that's the large demographic to play toward right so because I hate Joe Rogan's comedy I and a lot of the talent is being influenced in that type of direction it kind of I think leads to me not liking it for that and it's really unfortunate because I think like Joe Rogan's sphere of influence on the stand-up comedy scene has just been has just kind of tainted otherwise good premises that I think I would like in stand-up comedy. The example I would give is like the Kill Tony show. So for my listeners who don't know, I'm not sure how big Kill Tony is. I'm sure it is. It's gone it's gone popular over time because especially with it like the guests that they feature. But Kill Tony, it's like a stand-up comedy show. And the premise is that you have a panel of like quote unquote comedic talent. I'll get to that in a sec. But like a panel of like comedic talent. And what they do is that they bring on um random people from uh the audience. Um and it's not always just random people from the audience. I think they also have some returning guests coming on to um the program. But for the most part, at least from the clips that I've seen, it's like random people from the audience. They bring them up and they basically give them a minute to do like a, a mini, like a like a mini set, right? a mini stand up set. And like the whole goal is that you know to get the audience to basically laugh within a minute, right? And then after the minute, they uh, the panelists talk to the person that they bring up, either to like most most more often than not to like roast them. Right about how they didn't get a laugh, or you know, just to roast them in general because it's one of the format and whatever. And um, yeah, I, I I like the premise of that. I think it's like interesting to like bring up a random person to do like a mini set, right? And then to kind of have like the roasting afterwards. I, I think that's like a fun idea. Granted, there are like some issues with the Kill Tony format, as other people pointed out, like. It's very difficult for anyone to get a laugh in like a minute. Right? That's like a very difficult thing, right? Like even like the top comedic talent would struggle with that. And even like some of my favorites, like Mitch Hedberg, would probably struggle in that form. Um, but I, but again, this is like tainted by the whole Joe Rogan's of influence because not only has Joe Rogan himself been like a guest on the panel. Uh, you also have like a lot of Joe Rogan flunkies that have also made appearances, including like just random choices. Like I've seen clips where you had Dr. Jordan Peterson on there, as well as Tucker Carlson. And I'm just thinking to myself, oh yeah, the famed arbiters of comedy, Tucker Carlson and Jordan Peterson. Like what? Like what are you doing? Like did nobody else find that weird? Like Kill Tony fans? I don't know if you, if you randomly listen to this episode did you not find that weird that they brought on like guys that probably never laughed earnestly in their life (laughs) like my god what are you doing um and like the only direct connection i could think is like oh they were also on joe rogan you know um but yeah and again i know that like there there is like stand-up comedic talent that does exist side of like the whole Joe Rogan sphere of influence. But I feel like they're like the exception. Right? Like the only other big stand up, I mean, outside of like up and coming talent, you also have like occasionally have like old comedians from 2000 earlier making like returns, but it's, it's the same tired stick of like they come on and it's like, you know, million dollar like 
sets, like million dollar, like yeah, million dollar sets or specials, but they come on, they're like, oh geez, I hope I don't get canceled for saying this, and then they proceed to just recycle old jokes from the nineties and two thousand. I'm just so tired, man. I'm so tired. Uh, I don't know. Um, like, I don't want to completely discredit like stand-up comedy. Bro. I, I think that's just such a bad mentality to have in general. Oh, I watched a few bad anime shows, so I just hate anime entirely. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just not like finding the type of talent. I, I guess in assessing what I like. Like Mitch Hedberg, I know had like he was very unconventional. How he, like, it was like for him more simple jokes, which I, I guess I just like more. Um, Rodney Dangerfield, which I think is like he's he's super interesting because he's very much of his time, but also kind of ahead of his time. You know, a lot of his humor was my wife humor, but it was, it had like that self deprecation angle where it was always like targeted against him, which I think plays better to, like, a audience. Um, and so I, I guess maybe I have to find something more, like, kind of abstract. I don't know if abstract's the right word. But, um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I just, um, I hope. I mean, I don't, know. I don't know what I could really say. I mean, maybe I, I have to just give it more of a of a chance, but I just don't really see it appealing to me anytime soon. But I guess that's all I have to really say on the topic here, kind of a shorter episode. Um, if you all uh, thank you all so much for joining me. Uh, if there are any like bad Joe Rogan fans listening to this and you made it to the end here, thank you so much. Um, and look, Joe Rogan is going to make way more money than I will ever see in my lifetime. So who's the real loser? I mean, come on. It's all just fun, right? Okay, later.